is Proverbs 31. People who know the Bible immediately, um, their, their mind goes to who can find a virtuous woman and, and, and it is a chapter that deals mainly with that. But I'm gonna use it uh, not just about womanhood but about motherhood this morning because the Bible in that chapter is the virtuous woman that it's talking about happens to be a mother. Uh, Proverbs chapter 31 and look at verse number 27. Proverbs 31 verse 27, please. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. That means she don't sit and watch Dr. Phil all day. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. So she had to be a mother because her children rise up and call her blessed. And her husband praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. That's a truth, isn't it? Beauty is vain. Amen? Skin deep. But the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gate. I want to preach this morning on thought I've never used in all my years of preaching. And I guess the title should be The Bible Exalts Womanhood. Or The Bible Exalts Motherhood. Either way. Or both. Now the devil hates the Bible. The devil is called the God of this world. The Bible said the whole world lieth in wickedness. You, you need to understand what I'm saying by way of introduction. That means the world out there, by and large, are controlled by the spirit of, of the devil. That's all there is to it. Uh, that, you know what, that's what's wrong with this world. It's laying in the devil's lap. And the devil is continually trying to, to find fault with, to disregard, to discredit, to refute, cause people to reject, or at least doubt the Bible. So one of the tricks the devil uses to make people who don't study and pray think the Bible is, uh, is wrong is they portray the Bible as being against women or as against womanhood or somehow or another teaching that women are beneath men in creation or importance or in the, in the love of God. Now what they're doing, they are banking on the average person's ignorance or lack of study of the Bible and picking out little parts of the Bible in, uh, out of context and tell them, look at that, the Bible's no good, look what it says about women. And they have successfully turned a whole generation of college age uh, women against the Bible. Because they, they, the, the, the girls don't go to church, they don't understand the Bible. And the Bible's a two-edged sword, it's a dangerous book if you don't get it right. You can pull out verses of scripture and teach anything uh, you want to. You can teach there's no God and have the Bible to prove it. Uh, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. There, the Bible said there is no God. You can, you can prove anything by taking verses out here and there. And what the devil has done, he has went in and picked out verses of scripture and said, see there, the Bible makes women in servitude. See there, the Bible is sexist. It's, it's, see there, but a male chauvinist wrote the Bible who believed they're better than women or above women. But I want to tell you this morning, nothing could be further from the truth. Truth. You go where women, you go where, uh, you go where uh, uh, the Bible's not preached and see how women are treated. Go to a country, and there's a lot of them, Go to countries where there is no Bible and no Christianity and look how women are treated. Go to Saudi Arabia. Uh, go to places where the Koran, our, our news media loves to exalt Islam so much and even teaching kids to bow down and, and exalt in Islam and trying to let them take over the country. Go to a place where Islam reigns and watch how women are treated. They can't get driver's license. They can't even show them, but this much right here. And the low down men can do whatever they want to and the women are treated bad. That is not the teaching of the Bible. 
No religion in the world exalts womanhood like Christianity. They say, I, I know I've heard them say this, I've heard them say, well, the Bible's sexist because it says a woman can't be a pastor and, and I, I want to be a pastor. And, and, the, and the Bible says, well, you know, we can, we can take stuff like that and turn it right around and say, well, God is a sexist because men can't have babies. It's, it's not fair. Uh, men can't have babies and God fixed it so just women. Can have. That's mean. That's sex. Now, God's not, God's not a sexist. God's not a male chauvinist. He did fix it so only women could have babies. I think, I think a man's crazy that wants to have a baby. Uh, but they, some of them trying now. I think a woman's crazy that wants to pastor a church. Uh, do what you're built for. That don't mean that don't mean that God's playing favorites. I mean, a Mustang GT like Jeremy's got sitting out there uh, is not made uh, to haul logs out of a logging trail in the woods. A tractor and trailer or a monster truck is not built to give you a smooth ride to California and get good gas mileage. Do what you're built for and hush. Uh, don't, I mean, it don't mean, it don't mean one's better than the other one. It means they're built different for different purposes. So the Bible is not against womanhood. Amen? That's right. The Bible is absolutely perfect and balanced and scientific and takes into consideration human nature, not like the pitiful books that the world writes against religion. That being said, I want to talk about some women in the Bible. It's going to be a little bit different than I normally do on Mother's Day. And let me say this. You will not find this in the Quran. It's not in there. First, uh, the woman was the very last thing that God ever made. Crowning act of creation was woman. Woe man. A man with a womb. God made Eve. God made all the animals. God made the trees. God made rocks and mountains. God made fountains of water uh, to come up and rivers. God made the atmosphere and clouds and outer space and planets and stars and the moon. And he made bugs and creatures and great fish, all kinds of different fish. And then on the sixth day, there he made man. And he made, caused man to go to sleep. And he said, it's not good that a man should be alone. I'm gonna make him a help me. And Adam said, uh, you're right, Lord. I, I need somebody to go fishing with. And the Lord said, that is not what I'm talking about. Uh, you lay down here and go sleep. And Adam laid down and took a nap. And while he laid there, God took a rib out of his side. You say, preacher, do you believe that literally? Absolutely. Uh, he took her from his side. He didn't take her from his feet so Adam could walk on her. Uh, he didn't take him from his back so she was behind him. He took her to his side so she could be side by side and complete Adam and work with him. Ladies and gentlemen, that was God. Somebody said this. Somebody said God made Adam. He said, I don't know about that. I can do better. And then made Eve. I don't know about that. Uh, but I know, I know that a, a, a woman is uh, the, the, the most beautiful uh, thing and create, create, creature of all God's creation. A woman is way more pretty than man. I ain't never seen a pretty man. And if you're a man, I hope and pray to God you ain't never seen one either. Oh, Lee, there's, some, there's something wrong if a man thinks a, a man is prettier than a woman. You got, you got, you're, you're blind. I mean, there's something wrong with you, amen? Uh, but see, God made womanhood, and he made woman. And then we see in the book of Exodus, it was a woman who God used to raise up Moses, the leader and deliverer of Israel out of Egypt's bondage. It was a woman. Uh, the Bible don't say much about Moses' dad. The whole story there in Exodus deals with his mother. You see, Pharaoh had made a, made a rule, a law, that every male child under two years of age had to be killed. When a woman had a baby, if it wasn't an Egyptian, 
They sent soldiers down there to their house and killed that baby just like that. And they, it was a law, had to be done. Well, Moses' mother, she had little baby Moses. And when she saw him, she done like every mother, immediately fell in love with that little baby boy. She said, oh, I mean, it was tied to her. His, his body had been inside her body for nine months and she looked at that baby. I mean, there's no love in the world uh, like that love of that mother for that child. That's as close to God's love as you can get. And she looked at that little baby and all she could think of was soldiers are gonna knock at my door. Soldiers are gonna come in here any minute and get my, oh God, oh God, not my baby, not my baby. And for three months, one month, two months, three months, she hid him and she kept him in the closet and told his sister in there, you stay in there with him. And when the soldiers knock on the door, you cover his mouth. And little baby Moses laid there and, and, the, and the soldiers were looking for him and couldn't find him. Two months went by, three months went by and maybe word got out. The Bible said she couldn't hide him no longer. And Moses was crying and them soldiers were walking up and down the street. So I heard you had a baby in here. I heard you had a baby. So she took that little baby and she put him in a little box about that big little ark and she, she daubed that thing, made it waterproof and took it down there to that river. And can you imagine that mother taking that little baby and putting it just like a little, little casket almost and closed that box up, maybe like some holes in there so he could breathe and she put him in that river right by the, by the, the, river, the, the reeds and stuff, fishing pole stuff, them things that grow up uh, uh, in there and, and she was in there floating that river and she went back and said, God, I don't want to lie. I'm not gonna let the devil get my child. I'm not gonna let the devil get my child. I, the devil can't have my child. Oh, I would to God we had a generation of mothers like that today that would say the devil's not gonna get my child. I'm not gonna just give my child up for the world to do whatever they want to do with them. I'm not gonna let the world have my babies. I'm gonna pray a hedge around them. I'm gonna build a fence around them. I'm gonna stay on my knee. Look, we got a lot of mamas today. They're too worried about getting their figure back and going out with the girls on Friday night than they are what's gonna happen to their baby. And I'm telling you, this woman, she said, hey, uh, the devil, you ain't getting my baby. You're not getting my baby. Pharaoh, you can't have my baby. There is nothing in the world like a mother's love like that right there. And, I, and I'm telling you what, uh, the, the Bible said uh, Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh's daughter came down and Moses' sister was over here uh, looking like that. She's way off like that. Here come Pharaoh's daughter. I mean, he was the king. He was the one that made the law. Here come his daughter down there to wash, take a bath. And she is in that, that uh, taking that bath like that right there. And the Lord said, cry now, baby. And he goes, wah! Have you, have you ever wondered why God made a baby cry so annoying and nerve-wracking? So you'll get up and feed it. If it's pleasant, you lay there and let him starve to death. But, but God lets them, man, they, they, nothing can rack your brain, your nerve, worse than a baby crying. Lord have mercy. I mean, good night, uh, will you hush. And, uh, and then she said, I hear a baby. I hear a baby. I hear a baby. And she went over there and opened that thing up. And as soon as she opened that box, the Lord said, now smile. And he went. I hope he didn't do that. Uh, three months old. Uh, but she said, oh, boy, I'm telling you, when a baby smiles at that woman. Hey, I like, Fra I like Frankie. You know why everybody likes Frankie? Uh, you just look at him and he'll smile at you. The Lord said, smile, Moses. And Mo Moses smiled like that. And she grabbed him and said, oh. And the nurse said, that's a Hebrew baby. That's a Hebrew baby. That's a Hebrew baby. Your daddy said, all of them got to be killed. All of them got to be killed. She said, I don't care. I th I'm going to take this one home and raise it. I want to do like, I want to I wanna be like, I want this baby. I want to keep this baby. I want to be a mother to this baby. It's laying out here in the, in the river, right in that little box. Oh, poor little, you know. I mean, she started all that stuff. She said, I want to keep him. I want to keep him. I want to keep him. And then they got up there and, and she said, Daddy, Daddy, I got a little baby. Can I adopt him? He said, sure, I don't care. And she said, wait a minute. He don't look like us. That's a Hebrew baby. 
That's one of them, that's one of them Jews. You can't have it. She said, but daddy, you love me and everything. She, she said, daddy, you killed all the rest of them. He said, I told you they all got to die. I'm afraid they're going to take over this place one of these days. Kill them. And she said, one won't hurt. Oh, she talking about the wrong one there, wasn't she? Guess who he turned out to be? <laughs> Man, it let them all out of there. Well, one little baby won't hurt. Well, she talked him into it. And you know what? Uh, she got over there and Moses' sister was over there like, like this, like this, watching. She said, oh, are they going to kill him? Are they going to kill him? They took him in the mouth. And she went home and said, Mama, Mama, you're not going to believe this. Pharaoh's daughter come down. And she said, no, don't tell me that. No. She said, no, Mama. She got baby Moses and she took him home and, and, and she's got him in the palace. And she said, no, Moses is without doubt rent. Uh, he, is, he is gone. And she said, no, Mama. She loves him. She's going to raise him. And she said, you're not going to believe this. I mean, so she goes and tells, uh, goes to Pharaoh's uh, 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 daughter. And she said, hey, you're a Hebrew girl, ain't you? Come here a minute. I got a little Hebrew baby. Why don't you come, uh, you want to come to my house and help raise him? She said, sure. Can I bring my mom? Sure. They had no idea. Pharaoh's had to pay the bills. His mama and sister got to take care of him and raise him. Pharaoh bought the diapers. Pharaoh paid for him to be homeschooled by his own mother. Pharaoh paid it all and brother, Moses' mother. Now there, ladies and gentlemen, is a woman and a mother. The Bible, if that would have been the Koran, it wouldn't have told a story like that that made the woman the hero. Don't you ever get in your head that the Bible degrades women. Some of the greatest people in the Bible were women. As a matter of fact, I'll get to that in a minute. Sometimes a, a woman can usually rise higher than a man in goodness and grace. Best thing on this earth is a good woman. Now, the worst thing to me, woman, but I ain't preaching on that today. Uh, uh, hell, that's no fury like a woman scorn. That's true. Listen, a woman can be the best thing in the world, and she can be the meanest. Trust me. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, but uh, I don't want to ruin it. Uh, I'm talking about the good parts today. Listen here. It was a woman. It was a woman, Rahab, who tied the string there in the in the in the window, I preached on it a few weeks ago when the spies came and she hid the spies. You know the story if you read your Bible. If you read your Bible, you'll know what I'm saying right. And this woman and, they, and saved her family and, and was a pitcher and was in the lineage of Christ. Uh, uh, Rahab the harlot. It was a woman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was jail back in the book of Judges chapter number four when Sisera, Sisera came and that was a wicked man and the Bible said he come to her house. He was the enemy of the Lord. As a matter of fact, Sisera was a type of the Antichrist in the Old Testament. There are 18 types of the Antichrist back there, like Nebuchadnezzar, Pharaoh, Daniel's image, a lot of them like that. 18 types of the Antichrist in the Old Testament, and Sisera was one of them. And she, he came to this woman, and she brought him forth butter in a lordly dish. And brother, she set him down and said, why don't you take a nap? Now listen to this, ladies. And buddy, I mean, it's like Frankie and Johnny, buddy. She caught him asleep and she took a hammer and took a nail and right there, she the, things were different back then. Uh, they, they had to execute the enemies of the Lord and she put that nail right there in his temple right there and took that hammer and go, bam! And that thing went through his head this way and nailed him to the ground. That's Judges chapter four. And she, I mean, uh, and God blessed her for that. People don't understand the Bible get all crazy over stuff. That's because they don't have one spiritual bone in their body. He's a type of the Antichrist. And the Antichrist dies in Revelation, or at least almost dies, I believe he dies, uh, with a deadly wound to the head and made that woman jail in a type of killing the Antichrist, which leads me to believe there's another place where one cast a millstone down and killed one of them guys. That leads me to believe Believe that a woman in the tribulation may be instrumental in bringing down the Antichrist. But that's another message. That's how God exalts womanhood. 
She put him to the ground. Ladies, do not get any ideas. So I'm glad you told me about her, Brother Danny. That's my new role model. I'm gonna go home and take care of business tonight as soon as he goes to sleep. Don't do that. I'll get the blame for it. Inciting violence. I'm just telling you, as a great woman, some of these guys need it for sure. But you leave that up to the Lord. I noticed that there was a bunch of women in the Bible who were barren, who wanted to be a mother and couldn't. I, I obviously, being men, we, we can't understand that. I can't understand that. Uh, but I know I have dealt with many, many over my years of ministry that said we want a child and can't have one. We want a child and can't have one. And I've noticed every time, if you're in that, if you're in that situation where you really, really, really want a baby and you can't have one, that if you'll do right and serve God, God will fix that and make that up to you somehow. It, it may not come from your physical body. It may not be your biological child, but you're gonna get the kid one way or the other. Uh, it, it always works out that way. And God sometimes allows that to happen so you'll help some other kid, some kid who don't have a, a real mother. And you know, with a foster thing and adoption and, and uh, step parents and all, all of that kind of stuff we could get into. But I wanna tell you this. There were several women in the Bible. Hannah, Elizabeth, Sarah, uh, Rachel, uh, all in the Bible were women who could not have kids. And let me just quickly tell you what happened. Sarah and Abraham couldn't have a child. Abraham jumped the gun and got uh, his, what's her name? Uh, Hagar, yeah, and had Ishmael. That's where all the Arab come from and that's why they got all the oil and, and uh, gas is high right now. If he'd just waited on the Lord, gas would have been a lot cheaper right now in Morgan. But he, finally, him and Sarah, he, God said, I'm gonna give you a son if you'll just chill out. Uh, and don't try to do my work for me. And God gave them a son, Isaac. And then there was Hannah. And Hannah was in 1 Samuel chapter one and verse two and had no child. And she prayed and prayed. God, let me have a baby. God, let me have a baby. All the doctors told her she couldn't have one. Everybody told her it was getting too late. Nobody gave her any hope at all. She was in the altar praying one day and her lips was moving like that, praying for a baby and the priest thought she's drunk. And, uh, and she was just begging God for a child. Sure enough, she got pregnant and her baby was none other than Samuel, a great man of God. You know what his name means? He was asked of the Lord. And she said, for this child, I have prayed. Elizabeth, in Luke chapter number one, was married to uh, 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 that guy, what's his name? Elizabeth and uh, her husband walked in the fear of the Lord. Zechariah, and uh, she, she, uh, she, she walked in the fear of the Lord, couldn't have a kid, and God finally gave her a child. He was John the Baptist. Mary, of course, the mother of Jesus. Rachel, in Genesis chapter 18, verse 31, was barren. You see, Jacob, he's over the 12 tribes, the father of the 12 tribes of Israel, all the Jews. The, the blessing comes, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Not all of Isaac's other kids, not, not Ishmael, not even the brothers and sisters, through Jacob. God blessed Jacob. Check it out throughout the whole Old Testament. The blessing is on Jacob and on his children, the 12 tribes of Israel. Don't listen to people say, well, the 10, the northern tribes and the two tribes and the lost tribes and all. The blessing of God has always and will always be on those 12 tribes of Israel. And God gave them that land over there and every inch of it belongs to them today. Amen? It sure does. Not a foot of that uh, land belongs to what they call Palestinians and, and Muslims and all that. All of that land, every bit of it, belongs to Israel, uh, the Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel. And Rachel had that baby. Now, you notice what I said in the last five minutes? Every one of those women, listen to me carefully, every one of those women that couldn't have a child when they finally did have one, it became a great man. Amen. Every time, every time. Sometimes God don't let you have children because he's fixing to give you a special one. 
And you let God do what God's going to do. That was a woman, women, in the Bible. It was a woman called the widow of Nain. <coughs> Excuse me, in Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 16, where the Bible said there's going, she was a widow and a mother. That means her husband died. So here's a woman. She had already lost her husband, and then her only son died. And you're walking out there, going to the funeral, falling behind that casket. And the Lord out of millions of people that he could have been with that day, went to that funeral procession and said, I care about that woman. She's already lost her husband. Now she's lost a child. And the Lord touched that box. And that boy got up and went, started eating, talking, laughing, and went back home just fine. You know what that tells me? That tells me that God in heaven sometimes gives a special blessing and love to a woman who's lost a husband and especially a child especially a child. It was a woman, Mary, who was chosen to bring Jesus Christ into this world. Now, how come us men don't jump up and down and get mad and say, it's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair, God's mean. He should have let a man bring Jesus into the world. See, you, you know why? Because we're secure in who we are and we believe the Lord made us men because we're supposed to be men. Don't get mad and say, well, it's not fair. Men get to do this, but we don't get to do this. You get to do a lot of things men don't get to do. One woman said, well, it's not fair. I'm supposed to submit to my husband and do what he's, that's, that's wrong. I said, is it fair that he has to love you enough to die for you? Have you ever tried to love somebody enough to die for them that fusses at you every time you walk in the house? You think it's hard to submit, honey. Try that for a while. Just kidding, got off the subject again. Amazing how the Lord sticks things like that in here for you rebellious people. Mary was chosen by God. The angel told her, thou art highly favored. It ain't fair, it ain't fair, it ain't fair, it ain't fair. He said, she is highly favored, not me. No, no, thank God for the Virgin Mary. Thank God he favored her. Thank God for the virgin womb that brought forth the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah, I rejoice. I ain't jealous of Mary. Thank God for her. I'm gonna shake her hand when I get to heaven. I'm glad she was there and God used her. It was a woman, women, who were last at the cross. Sure was. You don't think the Bible exalts womanhood? When Jesus, listen, I guarantee if the Koran, Muhammad didn't even write the Koran. He was illiterate. Wallowed around in the, on the ground foaming at the mouth and then dictated it to somebody and they wrote it. Do you think they'll put a story in there that says their, their hero died? The Koran says Jesus didn't even die, y'all. that he just went on up to heaven without dying. Do you think they'd put a story in there that when the hero was dying, it'd just be women around the cross and all the men run for their lives? No. The Bible exalts womanhood. Mary, Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary, that other one, I think there's three of them there. When the disciples were who knows where, when Peter was backslid cussing at the hamburger joint, brother, and said he didn't even know God, and the other disciples run for their lives and everything, it was that woman that said, I don't care if they kill us. I don't care if they kill us. I'm not leaving him. I'm not leaving him. I'm gonna stay with the cross. Listen, listen, there's some of us here. I'm like that. Listen, my mom stuck with me through thick and thin, brother. She stayed with me, and your mother has you too. You ought to thank God it was a woman that stayed with Jesus at the cross. The Bible exalts womanhood. It was a woman. It wasn't no sorry men. They were talking about themselves and took off running. Backslid. Those women stayed there. I said, I don't care if you kill us or not. We're not leaving him. I love him. The Bible even said in one verse that there's a bunch of them beside those three. It was a woman who was the first at the tomb on resurrection day. The Bible said then came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and, and they said, uh, uh, they don't, have you, have you ever wondered 
when Mary was there at the cross, have you ever wondered what happened to Joseph? Did you know Joseph is not mentioned after Jesus was 12 years old? And they went, you don't ever hear Joseph mentioned, right, right, Pastor? You don't ever hear Joseph. What happened to Joseph? I've heard people say he died. I don't know how you know that. I've heard people say maybe he, maybe he didn't believe in him. Wouldn't it be something if Joseph raised the son of God in his house and they rejected him as his savior and didn't even get saved? What, a, what about that? Maybe Joseph didn't even believe on the Lord. I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. But I know it was his mama right there at that cross and right there at that tomb. It was a woman who stayed with him to the grave. It was a woman who shouted on resurrection day we got the other disciples and Peter to come. The Koran don't tell them kind of stories. In closing this morning, I want to say this, ladies. It is a highly exalted place to bear children and raise those children for God. I know the world don't believe that. The world says, oh, they'll keep you barefoot and pregnant. Don't listen to them stupid religious people coming to get in Hollywood, make you a, make you a career. Uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with a woman having a job. And, and with Proverbs 31, she did business and stuff like that. But I'll tell you one thing. They have a highly exalted position of raising children for the glory of God that men can't and never could have. The best thing you can do for your kids is raise them for the Lord Jesus Christ and God Almighty. I wonder if there'd be mothers here today, right here this morning, and say, Pastor, I'm going to raise my child like them women in the Bible did for the glory of God. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take my motherhood seriously. I'm going to woman up. You know, they always say, man, I'm going to, I'm going to woman up and I'm going to be the absolute best mother I can be because the Bible exalts you as a mother. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Nobody's moving. Nobody's looking around. Tell you what I want us to do. Just in silence this morning, have, have a, in prayer. I'd like to ask every mother here today. Would you put the Lord first? You say, what about my kids? You put the Lord first, you'll, you'll do right by your kids. You put the Lord first, you'll do right by your husband. Is there some men here this morning say, you know what, God give me a good woman. And she's a good mother to my kids. I'm going to try to help her and be a blessing to you. Will you let God do that this morning? She's playing softly. I wonder if you, ladies, just meet me here in this altar and let's pray for a minute this morning. This old world's very bad and cold and is after your kids from the minute they wake up to the time they go to sleep, even when they are asleep. Let's get in this altar and say, I want to be the mother that God wants me to be. Come on, come on right now. Others, others, others. This crowd in this altar this morning as a mother and say, I want to be the mother that God wants me to be. Uh, my career, my looks, my clothes, my job is not as important as my kids. I want to I wanna honor the Lord and be the mother that God wants me to be. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Thank God, thank God. Mother's coming from all over, <coughs> all over this building this morning. What a blessing, what a blessing. As long as we got that, there's hope for the country. Maybe you're here this morning, you're a daddy or a husband, and you've been being, what they say, a jerk to your wife or husband, uh, uh, as a husband, and you wanna just make that step here this morning, say, preacher, I wanna get my life right with God. I want to be good to my children's mother and honor her as mom. Give her a good day today. Every day, be good to her. God will bless you for it. Maybe you need to make a start.
going to church. Maybe you haven't been to church in a long time. This would be a good day to start right now. I'm gonna make up my mind. I'm gonna start coming to church every Sunday. It'll help you. It'll help you. Help you in your family. Help you in your marriage. And it'll help you get ready to meet God. You come right now. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you so much for these special, precious mothers that we have here in our church. Lord, some of the best women I know in the world are right here this morning. I thank you for them. I pray that you'd bless them. I pray that you'd encourage them. I pray that every mother will have a very special Mother's Day today. Do what needs to be done in every life and heart. Help us now, Lord. God, go with us as we go. And Lord, just let mothers, some mothers that are not having a good day, I pray you'd somehow just love them and maybe I don't know, you wrap your arms around them, Lord, let them know you're there. Help that woman here today who's having a hard time. Well, thank you for it. <clears throat> we love you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake, amen.